Now let's talk about settings on the camera and so that you can get different effects um, and you can change the quality of your renders just within stage. So to do this, all you do is you go up to the menu and you go to camera settings or you hit the letter C. So if I click it, I can also hit C on my keyboard to show that panel. Now you'll notice the camera has a bunch of, of options and we have view angle so I can click and drag and that's rotating my view around. I can say pitch which makes it go up and down like this. I can do height which actually pans the up and down. I can also change the focal length, distance, and focal offset and aperture of the camera. So if I want a focal length of a 35 millimeter camera, that's what I have right now. But if I want, let's say I want an 85 millimeter camera, this is what it would look like with an 85 millimeter camera. So now I'm just gonna roll my mouse button and I'm actually rolling distance out. So this is as if instead of changing the, the this is like not zooming on your camera, but this is actually like walking backwards. Okay, so my distance is I'm gonna come out like this. Now. Right now, the way focus works in stage is that it's looking, it's shooting a little target out right in the middle and seeing what am I touching right there? That's what I'm gonna be focused on. And it just adjusts whenever you move around. So you'll notice if I go like this, this part over here is not in focus, this part is, and this part isn't as it goes away. This works exactly like a physical camera where um, depending on the type of lens you have, you have what's called depth of field. So this fuzzy area over here, and then it gets clear right here, and then it gets fuzzy right here. Now, let's say I want to move that so this is in focus. Well, what I do is I go to that camera panel, turn off automatic focus offset, and then I can drag it so that I can get closer or further away. So that's actually, I'm actually gonna move it over here. Let's do this so you can see it. So now this speaker, is much more in focus right now than this is over here. And that's because I'm setting a focus offset from the camera. Now, if I click back to auto, you'll notice that it just changes back and it, and it figures out where is that focus spot that I'm looking at. So if I move this over to where it says function, kind of in the middle of the screen there, that's all gonna be in focus and the rest of it's gonna be blurry. Now, if you notice anything about um, lenses as well, the aperture, is very low on this lens. And so you're gonna have a lot of depth of field where it's nice and blurry and sharp and blurry. But if I bring that aperture up, everything starts to get much more clear and much more focused. And if I go up to like an aperture of like 16, oops, typed it in wrong here. Here we go, drag it up, about there. You'll notice almost everything is in very nice focus. We don't have a whole lot of, of uh, depth of field. Um, and that's, some people like that, some people don't. You, maybe you want depth of field, maybe you don't want depth of field. So you just have to play around with it to get it the way that you want it to look. Once again, I can bring it way back down and all of a sudden I've got blur here and here. So that's something to think about when you want to have depth of field in your, in your shot um, is how blurry do I want it? The lower the aperture, the more blur I'm going to have in the depth. So the other thing that you can do with cameras is change the visual effects. So we have a lot of visual effects going on inside of the camera and I can choose change the intensity. So bloom is like how much, how much does that light kind of bleed um, on the object? And so you'll notice it gets much more fuzzy. It's kind of that dreamy um, effect. So I can either do that or I can turn it off completely. The other thing is exposure compensation. So just like a digital camera, if I want to make it darker without bringing the lights down, I can just change my exposure compensation down one stop, two stops, however many stops I want. Or I can kick it way up to really um, give it, you know, fill in those, those darks. Or I can just turn it off altogether and now I'm back at just zero. The other thing is chromatic aberration. And what chromatic aberration is, is it, um, replicates kind of the, the imperfections in a, in a camera's lens. And by doing that, if I turn this intensity up, you'll notice that I start to get kind of, it looks red on one side and blue on the other. And that's because it's kind of the imperfection of the lens and the way that the, that the light is coming through it, it does that um, automatically in most lenses. Now I can take that way down and I can turn that off. And now I don't have any of that going on. 
but I can turn it up and it gives it a little more realism because it looks like it's coming through a real camera. Um, the other thing, and I, you won't see it here, but we can, um, let's change it to another scene. So I'm actually going to go lighting, none, and then I'm gonna go scene, HDR. And that HDR, I'm gonna switch it to this sunrise. This is a good example of how you can see this lens flare. So I'm gonna hit key, C on the keyboard and I'm gonna do this and now all of a sudden, boom, I've got this big lens flare that shows up from the sun. And if I go to visual effects, I can make those things really strong or I can make them go away completely. I can just turn them off. And this shows you the bloom as well. Like I can, I can really kick that bloom or I can turn it way down and possibly even off. And that way I can really start to kind of feel like I have some, some input over what this, this uh, rendered image is going to look like. And lastly, you have vignetting. So vignetting is along the sides of the image. You get darker uh, because of the curvature of the lens. And you can turn that up and it helps it kind of focus that view. Uh, I'm going to go back to the camera and change it back to 35 millimeter. There we go. And then I'll walk it in. Um, but you'll notice how towards the edges, it's much more dark. Um, and that's the vignetting. So if I go to the visual effects, I can turn this down, I can turn it up, or just turn it off altogether. Like that. So you can play with the visual effects on the camera to really make your render uh, what you want. Now lastly, let's talk about ray tracing. So we are doing real-time ray tracing in, in stage. What that means is in real time, the camera is looking at the light and it's bouncing it around the scene a certain amount of times so that you get very accurate lighting. And if I change the scene back to like, um, let's go back to the sweep and then let's turn on that lighting again. Product showcase, there we go. You'll notice that the ray tracing is if I move, you'll notice all these little spots in the background and sometimes spots on here as well. What that's doing is it's bouncing the light rays around the scene so that we get really highly realistic looking renders. And to do that, um, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go back to visual effects. I wanna turn off the bloom intensity. That gives us a little bit too much. Um, I'm actually gonna turn these off altogether. And that way we get kind of a real pure render. And you can see it's much more nice and, and crisp. Okay, so if I go to ray tracing, right now I have it on low, low quality ray tracing. And what that's doing is it's only bouncing the light one time. So it's the light's coming in, it's hitting the ground and bouncing one time up and I see it hit that right there. But it's not bouncing any more times. In reality, light bounces multiple times until it doesn't have any more energy left. And that gives us what we see in real life. So what we wanna do is, if I wanna do a really nice render of this, I can actually kick up the ray tracing to medium. And now it's gonna slow the system down. You'll notice my frame rate starts to really take a hit because it's doing a lot more calculations on the fly. But you notice how it got rid of most of all that noise in the background and along the shadows and everything that happen when you have low on. So if I go to low and you look in the background and maybe you, you can see this because of the cam or the uh, video compression, maybe you can't. But if I go to medium, now all of a sudden that gets really nice and clean. And so that's what I wanna render with. So typically if I'm gonna do a render, I will kick it up to high actually, high quality. And then I'll go over here and it slows way down just because it's calculating all this in real time. But I go render image and then I'll go back to test and say save, yes. And it takes a little longer than it does with the other ones, but still much faster than a typical render engine would. And all of a sudden I'm done. So now if I go to that render folder, well, let me turn this off first. There we go, or low. Now I can go to that render folder and open this up. And now I've got really nice bounced light. It's bounced multiple times, so it's very accurate. The shadows are very accurate, nice and smooth. Um, the image is really nice and clean. And so now I've got a really good render of this, of this uh, stereo that I created in stage in about three seconds. Um, and it's 4K and uh, that quickly. So that's a little bit about rendering and all the camera options. So you have your ray tracing options, which is off, low, medium, and high. You have your visual effects, which you can turn all on here. If we come back down, type it zero. Um, kick these up a little bit, maybe do this. Let's turn that, that bloom way down. Don't need really any lens flares, but then I maybe wanna take this vignette intensity and maybe right there. And then my camera, all of a sudden I can do this. now. 
let's talk a little bit about aspect ratios. So if you want to render in a different aspect ratio, you just go to, uh, to settings, go to still images, type this in. So let's say it's 1500 wide by 2000 high. Okay, I'm gonna close that. Now, it didn't change the way my viewport looked because my viewport isn't framing it according to that. So all I have to do is turn on still aspect ratio and all of a sudden this is what my render is going to look like now. It's gonna be tall and not very wide because that's what I set it up as. So if I have a, if I, if I want to do an image that's tall like this, now I can come here and now I can go render image, that same image, and it's done. And I go back to this render and now that image is a vertical image like this. So very quickly I can just change the type of renders that I want, the, the view that I want from stage, and I just tick this on. Now it works the same with an animation aspect ratio. So if I go back to any animation that I've created, so let's go back to pan up like that, and I hit the space bar. Okay, but let's say I wanna do it indifferently. I can go to settings and go to movies, resolution, and I can go to, let's say it's once again, 1500 by 2000. Okay, and it's 60 frames a second. So now if I say show animation aspect ratio, now here's what the animation is gonna look like. It looks different because it's framing that now based on the resolution of your animation. Now if I turn it off, you'll notice all of a sudden it goes back. So it's the same animation actually, but now what it's doing is it's adding in the pixels on the top and the bottom because your resolution is different. So that's the camera panel and that's everything that you can do here. It's a lot of information, but I, uh, I hope you'll just grab it and start playing around with it. And just, you can see what you're doing with your camera, you can do visual effects, and you can change your ray tracing. So that's it about the camera panel.